First of all, I want to say it's kind of an honor to talk with you. I've, I've enjoyed your music uh, quite a bit. I've found it uh, very uplifting and moving. Oh, yeah. Is this uplifting sort of feeling from your music, do you do that on purpose? Oh, yeah. It's because, you see, uh, the, the music, even myself, uh, I, I, uh, it, it uplifts even my spirit. Now, I did this in a purpose of just to bring my people together and try to make them happy, to encourage them. Because, you see, in South Africa, my people, many of them, they lost the hope. Yeah, and many of them, they learn that Western music. Now, that's why I recruit my brothers and my friends. And I said, let us stick on our roots. A uh, long time ago, early time, it was in the 50s, I was playing guitar. I just left guitar. And I said, let me create our culture, pure, as a, just a cappella, because that is our culture, singing without instrument. And then we know how to sing with the instrument. But a pure culture is just singing without instrument. How do you find uh, the reaction to your music when, for instance, you're in the United States? I was very happy to see people uh, here in the United States. They just accepted us as we are. We love our music. Many of them, they came to me, they said, this music is us lifting their spirit, touching music. Although they don't understand the language, but they understand the melody and harmony. And they said, this is a very good music. I was very happy of that, to see people enjoy our culture, because that was my purpose, to share ideas, to share the culture. Yes, instead of throwing our culture away and then grab another culture for other people. It's good to share because I always believe that every gift from God has a spark of life. Now we must share that sparkly. We must share that life. The feeling behind your music is uh, kind of universal in its own way then, beyond the language. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right, yeah. That's why I, uh, I said music has no boundary. You can't stop the music. We are singing here, and then in the Bible they say we are going to sing in heaven too. Now we can't stop the music. That's why when people were trying to stop Paul Simon, when Paul Simon spread the culture, that, that was not easy to stop him, because now the culture very important. We, were, we are spreading the culture. Now, the culture has no boundary. Although the music are from Zulu land, it's for Zulu people, but we can't keep the music in Zulu land. We can't keep the music in my town, in Ladysmith. But we must spread the music all over the world. Yes. What is, uh, what is your town like, Ladysmith? Ladysmith is a small town. Although now it's a little, it's a little bit bigger than before, but it's a very small town. Although we are not uh, in town, we are outside on the, on the what they call the rural areas, because those people who are in townships, they are a little bit lost in the culture because of uh, they learn too much at school. Those music and they listen very much to the records and then they, many of them they imitate the records. On the farm there is no radio, there is no TV. We just listen from our father when they were singing. We take the sound from the mountain, from the birds, goats, cows, mm -hmm. just like that because there is, there is nothing there, it's just quiet. Now the people from the uh, townships, 
they listen different things. They listen the records, they listen the cars, they are making noise, they made, they, 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 they created the songs very nice, but when we come with the culture, even themselves, they get shocked. You're saying that your music actually comes from uh, nature itself. Many people used to say the music was born in the mind. Oh, yes. That was there in the mind. That was like Paul Simon when he opened the gate for the African people. And then American people, people began to know the, this type of music. Now, in the mind, the people, they come together to work from different places, different culture, and then they began to know that Oh, these Zulu people have a powerful music. That's why they all sing the music. And the other people who used to, to write the, about music, they say the music born in the mind. The music is originated in Ladysmith, the music I sing. Stratamia. There are many music in Ladysmith, there are many different types, not only in Ladysmith. Each and every people in Africa, they have their music. We have this Tatamiya and Zulu dance, and other people have their music. We used to compete with them. They know that though that uh, Tatamiya music used to win all the time, and the Zulu dance win all the time. Now, many people used to say the music uh, are born in uh, mind. Yes, it's okay. We create the, the music is began to create it in the mind because there are many people there they get they have time to to learn the music. Yeah, because this music is not in the university, it's not easy to get it. How has Paul Simon changed African music internationally? Oh yes. He had the the what I call the musician from South Africa. Very much, especially uh, ladies in the Black Mambazo a cappella, because <laughs> my people in South Africa, they all very happy to have this opportunity, because there are many of them who were thinking about, they want to know the result when we, we will have a time to uh, spread the music overseas. Now they were very happy when they discovered that even American, European, uh, Russia, and uh, Australia, Japan, they welcomed us. They were very proud of uh, this pure culture. Yeah, but Paul Simon played a very nice and big role to open that gate mm -hmm. by asking the group to work together with him to his album called uh, Reflect Album. That was something wonderful. That's why I used to say all the time, I thank God to make me feel as I do, huh? that it is a shame. It is, it, it is, it is being ungrateful, it is being uncaring and unpatriotic to destroy God's gift by concentrating very much to the foreign things. Just look at the people now. They enjoy the culture from South Africa. We are very happy. We were working together with George Clinton, the funk music. We were working together with another gospel group in Detroit. All those things, it's very nice to share the culture, to share the uh, ideas. How do you work out your vocal arrangements? Do you write the music out? Oh, no. To me, I, I can say, not only me, our people, they have the music in their blood. Uh -huh. We don't write the music. All the time when I compose the song, the group listen my voice. I give them my voice. I am the key of them. Then I tell them when the key is here, the altar must be here. I sing different voices to bring the harmony together. Yes. Not very hard because you see 
the music of uh, the latest Nipiak Mambazo has its origin from Zulu song and dances. And then from there to our current style, you see, we, we did it on, on our own way, but it's not difficult because all the guys were born in the place where I born in Lady Smith. So they understand? Yes, they understand. But although the, 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 the combination, even themselves, it, it was a little bit uh, difficult, even to me, it was a little bit difficult to, to set up the voices because I've got the idea in my mind to set up the, 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 the what I call the voices. But the encouragement, even myself, I got the encouragement from the dream. I was just like with a teacher every night who was teaching me how to be patient and carry on teaching the group. And sometimes he came with the, the, the what I call it, the group of singers at night and I listened their harmony. That was very nice encouragement to choose what I feel in my face. Yes. And do you work out the the choreography, the hand motions and things too? Oh yes, I work up the choreography, but it's it, it's from our culture. Yes, and uh, and it gets it, it just follow our harmony and the melody, and it little bit little bit change, but not very much because when we were doing this, our people. They understand what is it, what it is, but a little bit different because they are, I change a little bit the, the combination, the way to place is, to place our voices in order. Yes. Have you been back to South Africa recently? Oh yes, I go in and out on a time. In yeah. August I was in South Africa, yeah. but only for four days because we were very busy. Our yeah. schedule is very tight. We are very busy. Yeah. How do you find conditions in South Africa today? Oh, no. Things were coming a little bit better, but it's a little bit bad, too, because uh -huh. people, they were still fighting. Now it sounds like we don't know what people they want, because this is the time people to miss their leader and take care of their business, but they're still fighting. Now, maybe if the leaders, they try in other ways, they will be better, I don't know to try to maybe come together to the people. Because people, they are arguing. Arguing. They, the other one arguing because of me. Other one arguing because of you. Other one loves you. Other one loves me. They quarreling because of that. Now, maybe because people is quarreling because of you and me. If we come together and hug each other and talk with the people, Maybe they they going to stop fighting. I don't know. Yeah. So it's still uh, in kind of a dangerous flux there. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. There's still uh, many people uh, uh, dead. Uh, uh, we lost many lives. When you sing in uh, Africa, do you sing the English songs? Many of the records I have have both Zulu and. Uh, English versions. Yeah, in South Africa, because both people, they love Black Mambazo, but a little bit English, because there are not, not very much uh, English people who listen to Black Mambazo, but, but there are some of them who ask Black Mambazo to write two or three lines in English. In South Africa, we sing in Zulu, and another language, Sutu, uh, another Kosa, and Vanda, Shamane. We, we have many languages, but a little bit, but our base is Zulu. Yes. Uh -huh. When you, for instance, tour the United States, do you do a lot more English singing? No. We, 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 it's Zulu. Uh -huh. Yes, we sing it. We give them our harmony, just as it is, just to listen to our, what I call our, our rhythm. Probably our language. <laughs> Could you tell me about the uh, spiritual aspects of your mu music? Yes, I, uh, I, I in fact, uh, because of uh, to be in working in Durban, 
And then while we were famous singers in South Africa, and then in 1975, October, I got a dream that I must fast, stay away from food for four days, not eat. And then that voice was talking to me at night. That voice used to talk to me from my childhood, but that was stranger when talking about food, but the promise was that I'm going to defeat my enemy. And then I like to defeat my enemy. And then I did that. I didn't eat. I didn't eat for four days. And then after that, among the group, there are two members who were very sick, including my wife. And then I was in trouble going up and down to the doctors, going to the white doctor and the Zulu doctor. They failed to heal them until there are people who came in my house, in my room, and then they pray for the sick, for the sick people, and then they get healed. That was the day I just opened my mind and ears and I said, "What is this?" They told me that God is wonderful, and I joined the church. But I first read, read the Bible from October up to December, and then I joined the church. In January 1976. Yeah. From there, I began to praise the Lord. All my composition was praising the Lord. And then I discovered that people like that, those records very much. And then I joined the church from 1976. It was January 16th. And I just stand up and dedicate myself to God. And could that be a, a big part of the uplifting part of your music? Oh, yes. Because from that time up to now, that spirit who used to talk to me at night, sometimes now talk to me while anytime I heard that sound. Sometimes in my mental vision, I just listen those. I heard that what I call it. Uh, the, the, that sound from the from that choir, especially when I'm writing a song, and then I had something like new sound for that lyrics. Now I feel comfortable. I feel easy to to write songs. Uh, it's very easy because there is a spirit helping me all the time. I think of you guys as uh, uh, well, almost a spiritual choir. Yes, you have a very good ear, because that is my secret at night. I take long time to tell the group that, because I thought maybe they, they were going to... Because the first group, they failed to get the right harmony until they apologize, and then I form another group. And then I didn't tell that group I get the harmony from the dream, because I thought maybe they said, you are going to teach us the dream. No, we don't like it. I was afraid. I just teach them that I have this. Let us carry on. Let us carry on. And then, uh, that was very nice. To, because even myself, I was supposed to join that group if that group was on this earth. But now, I always listen to the group at night. But since I joined the church, the harmony was just ringing in my mind all the time, especially when I'm going to compose, writing the, the lyrics, and then the harmony is there, like giving me the keys of the different voices, and then I said, oh, then it is now. That's why now it's very easy to teach them. It's not like before. Before it was very difficult to teach them because I don't know how to teach, but I feel it in my, in my mind. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to tell them. <laughs> yeah. And do they, have you told them about your dream? Oh, the now they know. They yeah. know it, but they first saw this thing on the newspaper and they asked me and then they began to ask me <laughs> yeah 
and then I explained them. And do they understand? They understand very well, and then they were very happy. It's easy to them because now, since I joined the church, I come back to them, and then I always, when we're doing practice and I preach to them, they all repair one by one. Now it's easy to work with them. They know everything. Your whole group is in the church now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They have their special prayer before they sing. Because I told them that before we must stand before the people, we must ask the owner of the people, God, because he's the one who gave us this gift. Uh -huh. Now they love that very much. And does this, uh, do you find that this affects your audiences as well? Oh, yes. Many of oh. Many of the people from the audience, they used to come to me and tell me that they they get healed from the music. Yes. They told me many, many things. Uh -huh. Some other things I said, oh, my God, I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know you're doing the right thing right now. Exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. I know that I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> 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 they always encourage me audience always encourage me. Those people who have time to have a backstage ticket, they used to come and, 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 and encourage me. Some of them are Christian. They used to come and pray for me and lay their hands to me and they said, carry on. Yes. Tell me about uh, being on uh, the American media. You've been on Saturday Night Live and I understand you've been on Sesame Street. Yeah. Uh, have you enjoyed that work? I enjoy it very much, especially the Sesame Street. <laughs> there are many kids who used to come to me and say, We know you. I know you. <laughs> A, B, C, D. <laughs> they like that song very much, but they want me to sing the song on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we just recorded the song and then we have no time to practice. <laughs> because we were singing together with Paul Simon. Yes, and, and when I, we talk about Saturday Night Live, we talk about the big TV which gave us a, a very good exposure to the, to, the, to the world because there are many people who told me that they saw us from that TV. That was early 1986, before we went to the world tour with Paul Simon. Yeah, that was, that was something. Very nice. There are many, many, many TVs, even in, uh, in Australia, in Japan, uh, many. Mm -hmm. This is very nice to share ideas with the people, and we f it's very nice to find those uh, lovely people, like American people. They they, they did it. They don't keep their love. They tell you. They expose their love. They, how much they enjoy. Uh -huh. Very good. I thought it's only my people because they understand the lyrics. Because they were very happy that this is the first time to find the person who give us the story from the beginning up to the end. My people used to say so. Uh, I don't take very much because they understand the language. I say, all right, all right, all right. Because even the children in South Africa, they used to come to me and thank by giving them the questions because they used to have questions at school about the olden times. Now we used to put a little bit history in our records, like telling them uh, the, 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 uh, the groups of warriors and their kings from Senzangakona, Shaga, and Adabande, and other, what I call, all those olden kings up to nowadays. So there's education in your music as well as... Exactly. Uh, yes, you give the right the word. There <laughs> is education. They used to say so in South Africa. Yes. Yes, this is the music of love music of reminding the people they are home because sometimes people used to be away from home as I'm away from home it reminds when once I get to this music it reminds me who am I and it reminds me my home yes 
Mm-hmm. Even the melody has the sentiment of the people. That's why my people were very proud of this music. You affect the people in your own country, and as well as the people in uh, countries around the world. Obviously, we're all in different situations, but uh, the music seems to affect people in the same way. That's right. Yeah, that's why the people, the people used to say, uh, in Zulu, Ukushabelela, we have to go to Saudabuleyo, which means singing make the sad people to be happy. Once you were happy, everything in your mind it comes in order, and then you success. Everything comes in order. Cool down, get happy, enjoy, smile, and then everything will be order. 